everyone. Today we're going to make this adorable coffee cup gift card holder. Check it out. How cute is that? Now I got the general construction of this card. I got the idea from a fellow Stampin' Up! demonstrator whose name is Tara Bilbao, and I think I may have butchered her last name, but you see the spelling of it below. So, um, Hopefully I got it right. Hi Tara, thank you so much for the idea and I love this card. Um, I did actually change mine a little bit from hers. Mine is a Valentine's Day card because Valentine's Day is coming up. Um, changed the color scheme. A few different things, a little bit of different construction than hers, but most of it's the same. And I don't know how she did it, but she came up with this lid that she put into a PDF and messaged to me. Um, so if you would like this PDF, I will message it to you if you request it. So either put it in my comments that you want it or um, send me a, a private message on my YouTube channel and let me know that you want it and I will message it to you like she did for me. Um, so I'm, ex I'm very excited because we get to use some celebration items. This coffee cup is one of them. And this, how adorable, and you see I have a few little messes. Oh. Like it, but oh well. Um, now my suggestion for this, because it is a coffee cup holder card, or a coffee cup card, is maybe use a Starbucks card. If you have a big Starbucks fan, you can change it to a birthday card, make a Valentine's Day card for your sweetie, whatever you want to do. That's what it looks like. All right, let's get started. So first off, we are going to use some scrap, some bits and pieces of this, that, and the next thing. I'm going to use a little scrap piece of crumb cake, scrap piece of very vanilla, and I'm going to use a, t using, I, you're going to have to order 12 by 12 inch crumb cake cardstock in order to cut it down to the right size. So it's going to be 12 by 12 inch and it's going to be cut to four and a quarter by 12 and then scored at one and a half inches and seven inches and then folded. Okay. You're also going to be using a couple pieces of the more and more DSP. So one which you will die cut using the Hearts Collection Framelits, and it's this one. You'll die cut that out, and you'll have this. I'm actually using using this side of it. So this is this side, and then I'm using this side. Okay. I am also using another piece of the um, more and more DSP, and this is three three and three eighths by four. Okay, so taking your three and three eighths inch by four inch more and more DSP, hopefully this will show up okay. Um, you're going to take one corner, the top corner of your of that piece, and line it up with, and I. I'm fairly certain you're not going to be able to see this very well on screen, but um, fingers crossed. Along this little um, ridge uh, or whatever in the trimmer, you're going to line that up to the center, to the point, and then you're going to take this corner and line it up to the three-quarter inch mark. So if you're looking at your trimmer and you see that your one inch on this side starts over here, this is your, your three quarter inch mark right here, this line right here. So you'll line this corner up to that and trim at an angle. So I don't know how well you can tell, but putting it straight, you can see there's a little bit of an angle here. So then you're gonna take it and do the same thing, only this time you're gonna line this corner, unless you wanna flip it, you can flip it like that which is how I actually I'm going to do it that way right now so that it's a little easier to tell you basically the same way all right so you'll take this corner and line it up again in that little ridge and you'll take this corner and line it up to the three quarter inch mark this mark this line now that's assuming that you've got a trimmer like this um, I don't know how well, well it'll work on another trimmer. If you want, you can always just take a pencil and make a little mark at a quarter of an inch in from each side and trim it like that. But I kind of like to do it this way. I feel like it's a little more consistent for me. And 
trim it. And you'll have this. That's what it looks like. Cute little coffee cup shape. How adorable is that? Then you're going to sponge the edges all the way around with early espresso ink. And then you're going to take this piece of crumb cake cardstock and it is cut at uh, one and a half by three and a half. And you're just going to take a piece of repositionable adhesive and adhere it where you want it on your card, on your um, more and more a coffee cup shaped piece. And just look at the back of it and using a piece of, or using a pair of scissors, you're just going to trim off those sides. And once you trim these up, I'll show you what to do with that in a moment. What you're going to do next is take that piece of scrap, piece of very vanilla cardstock. This is a new stamp from the Pattern Occasion stamp set from the Celebration brochure. It's this stamp right here. We're going to ink it up in the primrose petals. Make it nice and solid. And you're going to take something that you have in your bathroom. You're going to take a Q-tip. And you're just going to remove the ink from the steam part of that stamp using one of the tips of the Q-tip. Okay, see, it's all off there. And then you're just going to color it in using the Crumb Cake Stampin' Write Marker. So then you'll have your beautiful primrose petals cup with the saying, a whole lot of love, on the bottom of it. Stamp it out. It'll look like that. It's perfect. And then you're going to take your postage punch and you're going to punch it out. And it will be close, so you'll just get it roughly where you want it because it's going to be close to that whole latte, whole latte love and close to that heart steam. But it comes out fine. It comes out just like that. You can kind of see that steam. Then you'll punch the upper left hand corner right here using a regular handheld hole punch or the one like uh, Stampin' Up cells, just like this. And you're going to take a piece of two foot, it's two feet long, uh, Calypso Coral Baker's Twine. And so once you cut those edges off of this piece of crumb cake so that they match the angle of the cup. You're gonna you're actually gonna sponge that crumb cake piece as well in the early espresso. Then you're gonna adhere those two pieces to together. You're gonna adhere those two pieces together and you're gonna tie the Calypso Coral Baker's twine around those two pieces together three times. And um, what I like to do is I, I like to actually put the postage stamp piece on first and then tie it around and tie it in the back and tie it into a little knot. That way you can hide the knot in the back. You won't have to hide it anywhere in the front. You're also going to take a piece of Primrose Petals satin stitched ribbon. This is about four and a half in an inches long and a piece of Whisper White Organza ribbon and this is also about four and a half inches long. And You'll take the two of them, holding them together, you will tie them around the Calypso Coral into a knot like that. Then you're going to put some adhesive on the back of this. What I would recommend is you figure out where, make sure you know where the front of your card is. So fold it at the 7 inch, and fold it at the 1 inch so you know where the front part of your card is. So it should look, look like that. And you'll line your coffee cup up at the bottom, okay? And um, so I actually, here's my lid, and like it, it'll come on, a sh when I send you the PDF of it, it will, you'll print it out onto a full sheet. If you can, if you can send uh, Whisper White or Very Vanilla cardstock through your printer, then you can do that. If not, just use a regular piece of typing paper. I don't want you guys breaking your printers thinking that you can do it. I can, some printers can't. They don't have that capability, so make sure you know what your printers will allow for. So then you'll just take some adhesive 
and put it on the back of that. Figure out where it goes on the front, like that. Okay. Now, you're going to use another piece of very vanilla cardstock, and this one is cut at four by four and a half, and I sponged all the way around it using primrose petals, and then I sponged just lightly at the edges using early espresso. I stamped Be My Valentine using the um, Delightful Dozen stamp set. It's this stamp, and I did that in primrose petals. And another new thing from the celebration that we're going to use is this adorable little stamp with the little heart on the bottom. I stamped that in primrose petals on a piece of crumb cake cardstock. Look like that. And then we're going to use another thing from the celebration brochure, which is the petite curly label. How cute is this? This thing is just so adorable. Punch it out. You'll put a little bit of adhesive on the back of that, and you're going to put it down on the bottom right-hand corner of that very vanilla piece. Put some adhesive on that on the back of that piece, and then using the bottom piece of the bottom inside piece of your, which actually that's the front of your card, but when you open it up, it's the bottom inside piece or portion of your the base of your card. There you go. Cute. Now it's going to be a little bit hard for you to write on this, so you might want to write on it before you adhere it down. It's up to you because it won't be easy to write on with this ribbon on the front. Kind of up to you, unless you want to write up here somewhere. Completely up to you. Okay, then you're going to take that heart what I like to do is set that gift card down over top of it and figure out where I want to put my adhesive. About like that. Slip your gift card in there. And there you go. There's your little area where you can write your message. Close it up. All right, and one last little thing I just about forgot. So I got these little pieces of Velcro. It actually comes in like a, in a little roll. I got them from the local grocery store. What I do is I put the two pieces together. I remove one piece of the adhesive, or one side of the adhesive, put it down where I want it, and then lift the other piece of the backing for the adhesive. Close it, and then, first time you do it, you probably have to be a little careful pulling that up so that it'll loosen up a little bit. There you go. See? Just like that. There you have it. Pretty easy. Again, thank you, fellow demonstrator Tara. I hope that I did not butcher your last name in the beginning of this video. You are extremely talented, and I really appreciate the idea. I hope everyone loves it. If you need any help or you want the PDF for this or if you can figure it out on your own, please feel free to message me and let me know if you need it and I will message you back um, with the PDF. Until next time, happy stamping!